Somebody in charge of the Zoom, is it, do you know that it's working? It's working. It's okay. working, Shai. Okay. I'll say a short cheer, a hot cheer. Okay, uh, there is a Gemara in Baba Kama, Daphne in Baba Medes, where the Gemara says, There is a din, thank you very much. There is a din, Hamotse Mechabero, all of our eyes. So the Gemara first starts off by saying that this is Xeris Al Kosov, learned that from a Pasuk. The Gemara digs, digs up a Pasuk, I think it's in Parshas Kisiso, where Moshe Abena goes up to Har Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, and he says, um, Going to be away in the mountains. Yeah. It says he's going to be away. He won't be able to take care of any of the DNA prayer that the people will have with each other. And he says, are here. So the simple shot, should approach to take care of the DNA prayer. The Gemara has an additional level to worship out there. As additional level of interpretation in the Pasik, the Gemara in Sanhedrin quotes a Pasik, a lot of times you have a Pasik, there's one Pasik that has more than one level of interpretation. So the Gemara says, Bibadram Yiga Shaleim has another level of interpretation, Yagish Raya, it's Machaber, all of our right. Then the Gemara asks, It's such an obvious din. <clears throat> I'm going to come to you and I'll say, that the jacket that you're wearing and the trousers that you wear, everything you wear belongs to me, give it to me. Of course, I'm better than all of our riot. But then, of course, you have to write. Such a, it's such a, an obvious svar, it's such a, such a muhtaq svar. You need a pasik for that, a lamali cross svar. So the Gemara says, no, the pasik really goes to tell me a different din. Ain't this cock and nella to the tchit? Was it ain't this cock and nella tchila? I go to Bezin and I have a time against you that you, you crashed into my car and you owe me a thousand dollars. The exit is a thousand dollars. And then when you come to this, and you have money. So you come to the dinner and you say, but before we discuss that dinner about the thousand dollar damages, you said that I borrowed two thousand dollars from you years ago. So you don't mind paying me a thousand dollars. The thousand dollars is a wash and I should pay you a thousand dollars. So the Gemara says, since I was the first one who was Tavir, you didn't come to Bezim to be Tavir. And it's called Kanla Tavir Tchila, first to deal with the dinner that I started. And then they'll pass in whether you owe me a thousand dollars. And then they'll deal with your dinner because uh, I was Tavir first. That's the way it says in Nigma. <clears throat> I remember in Yeshiva, we used to have a Boche, Mendel Zax. He was the son in law of Nechavetz Chaim. Uh, he gave Snicha in Rad. Dr. Belkin, who was the Rosh Hashiva, everybody, I always thought Rabbi Salvechi was the Rosh Hashiva. For many years, I came to the realization he was only a Margaret Chia. Officially, the Rosh Hashiva was Dr. Belkin. He was both the president of the, of the university and the Rosh Hashiva as well. He was chosen by the students. When Dr. Rebel passed away. It was a small little college. It wasn't a university yet. It was a small little college, and Dr. Rebel was both the Rosh Hashiva and the president of the college. And then when he passed away, so there's a big mark like this among the students, who should become the Rosh Hashiva? So the students chose Dr. Belton. So, um, so uh, Dr. Belton had speakers from Mendel Zatz. So I remember Mendel Zatz said on this in the world. Can you hear me off? Yeah, what do you need a bus? So the boys said. So if you look at the Gemara, the Gemara says, "Be quiet, like Eva, 
Asura Dayasya. If you have a pain in your leg and you have a pain in your head, you should go to the doctor. Why is that the wording of the Sura Brahma? Okay. I went to the doctor first, and the doctor take the first time for a sir. That's his work should be. Or says, no, the person has to tell you the thing. So he suggested you should check. He said, so far, I, I, I don't know how to check. You should check the check in the new. I think they have a website now with uh, all uh, the roof of your source. I think you should check them. But the man she was said for the more said about the other document dog on the base. That you don't need a person to teach you to do it by much more around her idea. It's as far as you do. So the man she was says, that's at first glance, you don't need a person. Once you get into the nitty gritty details of the dinner by much more around her idea, it's not quite as well as you are. But the right is the right to move into the books of the man. So we pass the way. can I still hear Well, I have to say, thank you very much. Well, you have to say that that's a swara that the more starts off, it's a swara, but then once you learn all the details, you have to say that it's Xeris al Kosif. Abshim Mishkab doesn't like that issue. Uh, a couple of years ago, one of the professors in the yeshiva, Professor Elias Horowitz, um, I don't know exactly, he's supposed to be one of the world's biggest experts on Kisra Yad or Rishayna. I didn't know that uh, for a long time. Uh, and somehow people from all over the world send him swar. So whatever he has an extra copy of a safer, he's very kind to me. He gives me a copy of the safer. So a couple of years ago, he got an extra copy. There's some professor of law in Eretz Yisrael, I forgot his name. I don't know who he is. He wrote a whole book about Rosh Hashim And he writes, he likes Rosh Hashim style of learning better than Rav Chaim. Because Rav Chaim says that there is a custom. Rav Chaim Shkab says everything is a swara. The legal principles. So this professor of law likes all the legal principles, and um, he likes Rav Shimon's ideas. Okay. Why did the professor in Yeshiva give me a copy of the book? It's interesting because in the book he quotes the Rabbi Herschel Shechter from YU claims that it, that his my father-in-law was involved in writing the Shari Yosha. The Rav Shimon Shkab. Asked Rabbi Yeruchan, who was the Mashgiach in the Mary Shiva, before Rabbi Chatzka Levenstein. So my father in law learned that they used to call it that was by Shrishan, and Chatzka was by Shane. So, uh, so Jim and asked Rabbi Yeruchan, he needs a Bach and knows how to write Hebrew in a fancy style. So he wants to, someone to rewrite his safer. So the Mashgiach sent my father in law to Rabbi Rabbi So he, he, how did I know that? After I got engaged, I don't know before. After I got engaged, all the rabbis and why you wish me Mazel Tov, and they told me. My father was the one who wrote to Shari Yosh. Everybody, all, all the Europeans, they all knew he wrote to Shari Yosh. So this um, professor writes, he never found any substantiation for that. He doesn't think that it's true. He can point out, in the to the Shari Yosh, he takes Habacher, a Baron who wrote to Sefer. He takes him in the Hagdom. I don't know why, why I can't find him. 
Rav Shemek clearly had a very different style from, from Rav Chaim Soloveitchik. I remember when I was first married, until we had our fifth child, we always used to go away for Pesach, either to my parents or to my in-laws. So I remember uh, one Pesach, I was by my in-laws, and I was learning Gemara Pesachim. And uh, my father-in-law looked, he saw I was learning the Gemara, Chamisha, Shinnisav, Ores Pischeim, Five different groups shechted five different carbonos pesach, and they removed the hides. And after they removed the hides, now they can't figure out which hide belongs to which animal. They realized that one of the five of them had a mum on the hide of the animal. So what do you do? Nobody can eat any carbon pesach because it's a tarugas. One of them is a is a, is a mum. So you can, no one can eat any, no, no, you don't know who's carbon pesel, who's kosher, who's in puzzle. What do you do with pesel sheni? So they, what do they do with pesel? It's all discussion anymore. So my father-in-law asked me, would I be interested in hearing a uh, shot from Rabbi Shem I said, I'm the rabbi, let's hear it. So he says, Akasha, Rabbi Shem Mishkap, yes, Akasha, and the Gemara. Why is the Gemara have a problem? Chamish and Shem Mishkap, or is Pesachim? And then he says, Yabel is, Baachas, man, one of them is a problem. Baalas, mom, you don't know which it is. Why don't you say that it should be bottle barrage? Had betray is bottle barrage. So I told my father-in-law, the men has chinach is that kashin. And he says that when I told it is bottle, but with the rabbanon, it's a chatech, a royal scabbard, so it's not bottle. So my father-in-law said, but Rabbi Shimon has a pshat that it's, that it's not bottle, when I told it's a rabbi, what did he say? My father-in-law said something I didn't understand. I don't know what he said. So I said, ah, I said in Yiddish, I didn't understand. Please say it again. Says it a second time. He said, he said it again, I didn't know. He says it a third time. I couldn't understand what he was saying. But the gift happened to be there at the time. The gift was related. So he said in Yiddish, the gift was very sharp. And his comment is, young man, Ken Yeredeas, is gagging Yeredea. He said, don't rey my cup. Rabbi said, it's wrong. It's against Yeredea. And I know Yeredea. He says, talking about me. The young man knows Yeredea. I don't know what he said. I think it's in the Shariyosh. I have to take a look. Shimon Shab had a very different style on him. So Shimon writes, he doesn't think the Prey Yeshua is right. He thinks that the, everything is a swar. It's very difficult. The Bash is actually be a swar if you only say, hey, no, my mom and I arrived by a Jew, not by God. Obviously, it's a kasu. If it's a swar, it should apply equally to Jew and to a guy. Shimon Shab writes with humility. I wouldn't have written like this. He wants to quote a Trumas Adeshin. He didn't, he didn't sit and read Trumas Adeshin. So there used, to be a, there used to be a safer in the European yeshivas, in certain yeshivas in Hungary and Galitza, they used to learn sugis. And they would, let's say, they learn uh, sugi, asmachta kanya, asmachta on the kanya. So they would go through every masikta where they talk about asmachta kanya. Instead of learning that based on gimel, that comes to the learning straight. So they would learn, it would take a couple of weeks to learn also. So there's the safer, Kesef Nivchar, who has many sugyas alphabetically arranged, that's all of his gimel. And he quotes all the Gemaras and all the Rambams, and if there's a difficult Rambam, he'll quote the Magen Mishnah, the Lecha Mishnah, Mishnah Melech, and quote the Merkev Mishnah. He goes down to the Merkev Mishnah, and, uh, and this would help the people learn the sugyas. So Abshem Mishkap writes, he saw in the Kesef Nifchar, Kesef Nifchar, in the name of the Trumas Adesh. I wouldn't have been so honest, I would have written. The Trumas Adesh writes, what it's the uh, neighbor's das, I'm full of people to think that I was sitting and read Trumas Adesh. They know I don't read Trumas Adesh. I know I saw some, I know it's Akhapedia or something. But Shemish Kapazan, he writes, he saw in the guess of Nibcha that they quote, he quotes a Trumas Adesh, who just explains the Loshan. Much Machabera, all of her eye with the Hey Hayadiya, so the Pasik teaches you that you need a Raya Alimta. So that's it. That's a busset. That's not a swar that you need a raya limta. The Gemara says, when he's good by Isa the Heter, and Xeris are chasim, that raya is not good in the mama, the hudsi mama from a muxa, because you need a raya limta. If, if somebody finds an ave, then he doesn't know who lost it. So the Gemara says that you do go busset right to get back to the ave. One of finds it says that it's not his. So he's not a muxa, kind of no one is muxa on the ave. So if you have a raya that it, that you don't know, you don't know whether the Malva dropped the Shachayv, I should give it back to the Malva, he should collect, I should give it back to the Lord, but he should rip it up. So the Mar says, you go, you have to figure out 
who's the one who lost the Avera? Raiva is good by Mama. It's no good luck. It's Mama from a Muxa. Raiva is good. That you need to wait. There's a group of Rishari Mahal that Erechad is good by Hashavah's Avera. <laughs> Just like Erechad is good by Yisrael Erechad is good by Hashavah's Avera also. Some Rishari Mahal, you only need to wait in Lahotzi Mama from a Muxa, but it's not Lahotzi. So that... Um, so a lechut would be good by mamanus also. And then we shouldn't have a lotion. If rov is not good, lahotzi mamanus from a muksot, so ruba bachazok, a ruba adif. So chazok is weaker than rov. So if rov is not good, lahotzi mamanus, chazok is certainly not good, lahotzi mamanus. And sveik lahotzi mamanus is a big deal in post discussion in Tesis and Sumas, but the sveik sveik is good, lahotzi mamanus. Bori vishema, the Gemara has a machlech to some rov. I claim that I lent you a thousand dollars and never paid it back. <laughs> and you say, you remember we were discussing the possibility of me lending you money, but you don't remember exactly what you actually borrowed the money. If you borrowed the money, you want to give it back, but you don't remember for sure if you paid it back. So one opinion in Mar that Borish and where you honest, there's Namanas Badim I say you owe me a thousand dollars. I have a certain degree of Namanas. If you say you don't owe me the money, you certainly have Namanas. If I'm the Haitzi, I have no money. You are the Haitzi, you certainly have no money. You have more than money because of the Haitzi. But if you don't answer, you say, any are there. I'm not sure. I remember we were discussing the possibility of me lending you the money, but you don't remember the Badaz, whether I actually lent you the money. So, so you, you don't know, you don't know. So there's one opinion in the Bar Gashem, or Bar Yodif, the Haitzi. So we don't pass like that. The Mar says in Subas and Dati Beis, why don't you pass him? Because the Tal is a Muqsa. But if you have a boy with and it's not lahotzi from a muksa, then it would be good. That's what the plan show points out. Boy with is good, Nika right then. It's only no good lahotzi mama from a muksa. So all of these are really there is a kosum. You have to have a pasuk, and you need all of our, you need a raya limta to be mochzi mama from a muksa. There's a tesis yishonim, and the first amad alav in the second parak in Sulis. So the second parak so this begins on an amad base. So the next amad alav, the bottom tesis, they print on the gillion on the side, on the margin of the text, and they print the text in Shadim. And this appears in some other Mishadim, more and other Mishadim have this also. The robe is no good, Lahotzi Mamad from a Muxa, and a Chazak is no good, Lahotzi But if you have a robe and a Chazak together, then it is good. Why? A Muxa Machvel of Arai is a Schus Mamad that you have. If you're Muxa, I can't be Muxa Mamad unless, if I don't have a Raya, if I only have a robe, I only have a Chazak. So you have a schus that I don't win, but you can only use the schus once. So once you already use the schus that I shouldn't be much to the mammon with a rive, then I can be much to the mammon with the chazake. If I have both a rive and a chazake, or you have a bari v'shem, it should have been good. But it's not good l'hot simon. You have a bari v'shem, a plus a rive. If you have two things, you can't use the schus of our mitzvah machavel I can't use it twice in the same thing. It's all on the assumption that our mitzvah machavel all of our eyes is never so cross. this is. It's not a swan of chuta. <clears throat> there is a din in the Gemara in the end of Shavuos. Me toshen yach lishav and mishalim by Shavuot the Raisa. If someone is mukhev a Shavuot the Raisa. And is it is any Yochel Yishava, because it says a Taina Shema, no such thing as a Shavuot in a Torah, it doesn't make sense to swear Shema, I'm not sure. There is a Shavuot, there are Bonham Shema, but there's no Shavuot, there is a Shema. Shavuot, there is supposed to be Mavara, the facts in the case. So, so since the fellow is Mokhim Shavuot, any Yochel Yishava, Mishal, so what is that based on? Does it always apply? So there's a Taisus in Boba Tama Memro, and Aleph. The so, Omer Aleph of that dot where the Gemara has Hamotz Machavel Arai. So there's a Tesis there where Tesis says the only time we apply that rule on the Tosh and Yachal Yishav Mishalim is if you have a Bari Tov and a Shema Garua. Why? Why is that? So the Pashta seems to be when a person is Mukhriyav Shmuel, he's not considered a Mukhsak until he swears. So if it's not a muqsak anymore, then rov is good lahotzi mamet. Rov is good in diri mamet, whenever it's not lahotzi mamet. But if the, if a fellow is muqsak, 
But the halacha says he has to swear to have the right to keep it. Because money doesn't swear, the halacha says he's not yet, he doesn't have this cause to be called a muqsa. So he's not a muqsa, he had the bori tov and the shema garua. It really sounds very fishy. The guy says shema. He should know. He should know whether yes or no. Havala lemeida, Tyson says. So whenever it's a, whenever it's a bori tov and the shema garua, because havala lemeida, then it's a little bit delays to come on that the nitva is telling a lie, that the man is telling the truth. So normally it can't be Moitzi Maman based on a Rai, but in this case, you're not being Moitzi Maman. The fellow who's Moitzi didn't swear. So the sentence really is missing a little bit. He forfeits his course to be called a Moitzi. And if you're not a Moitzi, then Rob is good, because it's not Lahotzi. Rob is good in Maman, it's Ba'ash Shabbos Abed. It's only no good Lahotzi Maman from a Moitzi. What's the definition of a muqsa? What's the definition of a muqsa? So the Ketzeis in one place blurts out just an essay. Muqsa means bushusa. Usually we have a din. Usually we have a din. It's a Mishnah in Baba Kama. learns out from a person. Many men are gone if it's not Chayat Kefa. Someone stole a behemoth from the rightful owner, and then someone else knows who the behemoth belongs to. He steals it, they keep it, he steals it, but it's the good of the base of the ish, we're learning base of What kind of a thing is that? So, we ask like a bjechan, machlis to bjechan, the shlokish. It's a machlis, it's a tanoim, the gemar quotes, and the gemar has a very unusual machlis, it's a bjechan, the shlokish, which turned it to paskanai. Usually, Eidi Gemara doesn't like to say that, that the Amaroim are fighting about a Machlech and Satanoim. Eidi Gemara says, it's a Machlech and Satanoim, and Mishnah is a Masech and Smaas and Shenid, and Snuim and Echachonim, and it's a Machlech and Zabich and Mishlok and Shad Paschal. What's the Machlech is? We have a din of a good place, and you should learn the base Haganav, that the Hema that was stolen is Shaloya of the Nigda, but it's ain't the Bushusa, because he doesn't have access to it. He doesn't know where it is. Somebody stole it, he doesn't know where it is. So Rabbi Yechanan extrapolates from that Pasuk, it's not only a din that you don't pay careful. Whenever something is shali, the Eid of Bishusi, it's my bilis is incomplete. It's incomplete if you have shaloi or bishusa. So anything that shali is automatically bishusa. Let's say I park my car in the street. I park my car in a parking lot. The parking lot doesn't belong to me. But that's called, whatever shali is automatically bishusa. The Ritvo writes on Bab Mitzit that an Aveda is also Shali, and it's Bishusi, even though I don't know where it is. But if the Kanat has a Kinyi Geneva on it, then the Gemara says, there's only Kinyi Geneva on the Taltum. The Gemara says, if it's Masusa, the Karki, and Karki and the Gzelis, then it's Shaloi Bishusi of the Nignos. But if it's, but if it's Metaltalim, and the Kanat requires Kinyi on the Geneva, so then it's Shaloi of the Nignos, but it's saying the Bishusa. So since the Bailus, the nigna was incomplete because they didn't shoot side. So that's why the Ganif is still, the Ben Merav doesn't have to pay Kefal. He doesn't pay Kefal to the Ganif. The Ganif is not the owner. He doesn't pay Kefal to the nigna, to the rightful owner. He knows who it really belongs to. He knows who the real owner is. He doesn't pay Kefal because the nigna didn't have a full Bible on it. And Rabbi extrapolates from that passage that not only if it's any Bishusa, you don't pay Kefal. And the Bishul say you can't be Magdashit, and you can't be Mafkarit, and you can't be Moicharit, and you can't make a letter to Asa on someone else, and you can't be by the Masashani if it's stolen. You should love any Bishul say you're not a full Bailamana. So there's a concept of Shaloi and a concept of Bishul say anything that Shaloi is automatic, but Bishul say unless it has a Kinder Geneva on it. So that's what the Zoe so blurts out in one place. What does it mean, Mukhzok? Most it means that it's bishusi. You don't know if it, you don't know if it's shalom. That's the whole deal. The fighting is a mine is a yours. But possession, as they say in English, possession is nine tenths of the law. Possession means it's bishusi. Bishusi. That's called mosa. It's bishusi. It more calls it chazoke. More calls it chazoke. The word chazoke, the prima godim, is a commentary on. On the commentaries on Shulchan Aruch, on Arachim, you have the Mogad Abraham and the Taz. So the Bible God has commentaries on the Mogad Abraham and on the Taz. And on Yerida, you have the Taz and the Shach. So the Bible God writes commentaries on the Taz and the Shach. So the Bible God has a Psicha Kalelis to Arachim. In truth, it's not a Psicha Kalelis to Arachim. It's a general introduction to all of Tarashat. 
has a lot of very fascinating ideas. It's worth looking through. My father used to say that someone deserves to get a, a doctorate if he'll write a dissertation on the Pibagadim Psicha Kalas just to give all the Marmukhamis and to explain what he's talking about. As my father used to say, and after many years I found out there are 25 Svarim in Europe. There are 25 different Tamir Chacham wrote and got doctorates. <laughs> they began to put out Svarim. Commentaries on the Pimogodim Psicha Kalas. It's very good. So the Pimogodim has in that general introduction to all the Torah Shabbat. He points out that the word Chazak appears in the Gemara with six totally different meanings. And sometimes people confuse them. They ask plots conscious because they're mixing up one chazaka with the other chazaka. There's a din of chazaka who's muxik on the moment. That's one kind of chazaka. There's another chazaka, chazaka al chaber, sheni moitzi mitachas yoda dovi sheni mesuka. A religious Jew wouldn't have non-kosher food around the house. So if you're at that fellow's house and he has food in the refrigerator, you can assume that it's kosher food. If he has fruits and vegetables that grew in Eretz Yisrael, you can assume that it was mafish mice, even though he doesn't eat. Even if he died the day after he brought it into the house, Umar said, even if he dies the next day, chazat al chaver, chaver means one is metabol on himself to be the doctor and a fresh instrument. Chazat al chaver, that he wouldn't leave table around the house. That's a rubat al laysa kamon in the beginning of Bola Basra. Chazat al chaver, it's a rubat al laysa kamon. Then there's another kind of chazat al chazat al chamaisa. Umar says, it says in the Chumash, when the Kayan looks at the Tzara's bottom, if he sees that it has a kigris, the Yatzah Kayan al Pesach Abayis, by Tzara's, by Odom, and by the Godim, and by Tzara's bottom, the Tzara doesn't set in until the Kayan declares that it's Tommy. So the Kayan shouldn't be a fool. If he's going to declare that it's Tommy while he's still in the house, then he'll become Tommy, have Bala Bayis, his Tommy. So you should look at the Nega Tzara's, walk outside, and then declare that the house is Tommy, so he won't become Tommy. Why should, why should he say, by the way, it's Tommy? So the Gemara raises the question, and at the end of the week, we see that the Negat's are rankings less than the Kigris. Maybe at the time that he declared that it's Tommy, maybe it had already, maybe it already shrank by then, maybe it was a mistake. How does he know that it still has a Greek? Does it, uh, uh, wow. yeah, but the it's such a rare disease. Just because one baby died, it's not even a latest that she sh- maybe the ne- maybe she's a carrier, and maybe the next baby has hemophilia also. So the is Rebbe of how many babies have to die, either by the same mother or by sisters. How many babies have to die that it's even a latest asophic that maybe there's a, a suffix that flushes over here? Two babies or three babies? Totally different than Chazaka. How many times does a strange occurrence have to repeat itself that you should notice the beginning of a, of a pattern? Totally different ca- cases. He shows that one of them, a Farshim and Yerushalm, mixed together. One chazaka with the other chazaka is it mixed together two different chazakas. The word chazaka appears in the Gemara many times, but each time has a, six different meanings. Six different meanings. So there's a concept of chazaka that's muksa. The one is holding on to the mum, possession of nine tenths of the law. Whoever is muksa on the mum has the schools to hold on to it uh, till you have a raya limited to be months. Okay, so that's an introduction to. Uh, of a Metziah, of a Basra, a lot of dinner based on this topic of Chazak. Good, okay. Ad Khan, Ad Khan. We'll open the floor for discussion of other issues, of these issues. Okay. All Tamim sitting in this room are second generation Tamim Rebbe. Beautiful. But almost none of them ever met. Shaq, many years Shafter shared with us uh, impact perhaps in Shafter's life. Me knows that Shafter wrote from anything of the sort. Rav Soloveitchik was a. 
I remember one of the students of Rav Soloveitchik said, what is the greatness of Rav Soloveitchik? He gave the following much, but he's 100% wrong. So he says, if the whole Talmud Bavli would be lost, we only have one page, Rav Soloveitchik would be able to take that one page and figure out the rest of the Talmud Bavli. I think that's totally incorrect. Rav Soloveitchik's greatness was when there was a problem in the Gemara, he would quote another Gemara to shed light on this Gemara. He didn't stop say so he didn't say Suarez. Other people say Suarez come up with original ideas. He didn't say original ideas. He would take another Gemara that has in his side and show how it sheds light on this Gemara. He was a big bucky. He didn't remember. He didn't remember what daft the Gemara was on. He wouldn't remember Ahmed Aleph, Ahmed Beis. He wouldn't remember. I remember sometimes, but I remember. I remember it's a big fat Tysus on Ahmed Aleph, it's a skinny Tysus on Ahmed Beis. Remember what the page looked like. Rabbi Soledad, he wouldn't remember whether it's Ahmed Aleph, Ahmed Beis, he would, one of the, he would ask one of the boys to find it. So the boy would say, here the Suga is discussing this topic. So he so said, no, it's before that. He said, the Suga is discussing that. No, it's after that. He knew what comes first, second, third, fourth. But he didn't remember which side of the page it was on. So whenever Rav Salvation was giving this shit, he wouldn't remember where the Tysus is, where the Gemara is. He, he would always ask, Rabbi Lechensing was sitting to the right of him all the time. So he said that when the she used to be a Yiddish, he would say, Velcha daf aram. What daf is around? He would always say, Daf ha base on my base. Daf gimel on alam. But I mean, he would always say, Which was it? Which daf it was on? Abraham was a big bucky, fantastic bucky. Abraham used to say the Chazar Shur for Rabbi Salavich. So the purpose of the Chazar Shur was whoever didn't understand the Shia, he was supposed to explain it. He didn't, he didn't do that. He used to, he used to fill us in. Rav Salvechik gave the shear, so he would fill in other things that Rav Salvechik said on other, he had learned by Rav Salvechik so many years, other things to fill in the idea that Rav Salvechik, but Rav Shir explained other things as well. So it turned out only the better students went to the Chazar Shir. The weaker students really needed the Chazar Shir. They didn't come because Rav was going to make it more complicated. It was going to cost more than once. The first couple of months that I was sitting at Rav Salvechik Shir, I didn't understand because our baron would, would fill in more. I didn't understand, why is he the Rebbe and he says the Chazor? Why doesn't he say the Shia? He should say the Chazor, because our baron would fill in more things. After a couple of months, I realized that there's a difference. Our baron salvation was, our baron Lechnesi was good to say what he's heard from the Rav, but the Rav was uh, very original. It was very original. Aaron Lechnesi was the one who introduced in the yeshiva he had on his desk always the shas, the little shas and the rambam. For many years, no one had any shas and rambam on the desks in the yeshiva. Even the, even the bookcase didn't always have a full shas. Even the bookcase and the base manager didn't have a full shas. And now it's standard. Every desk in the yeshiva has a shas and a rambam. They have this small bottom shas and the rambam. The rambam is always looking everything up. That's what Rabbi Salvechi consisted. Whenever Tyson quotes a Gemara, you can't take the word for it. Maybe, maybe they've misinterpreted the Gemara. Maybe there's a different gyrus in the Gemara. How do you know that Tyson is telling the truth? He used to say, you go to university and you take Tyson's word for it. You're not supposed to take anybody's word for anything. You have to always check up all the sources. Baron was a stun. He was friendly to everybody. It's, it's his fault that I'm a maggot shir. I was planning to go to law school, got to make a living. I was going to go to law school because I used to learn Mecharus and Nicole with a boy who, who had a law degree. And he told us that in, if, you have, if you know Gemara, it helps you a lot in law school. I remember he was a uh, of mine. He was a Rebbe Nishim. He retired a Rebbe, a few years older than he retired by now. So he said in the first year of law school, I have a, a Nola Law School, something said, they give you a course where they, where they quote Sokim from different judges all over the United States. So they point out a lot of times there are contradictions. So they asked the students, do they have any way to fire for this theories? So he said he had a brilliant young uh, man, I think he said he went to Harvard Law School, and he was uh, the professor in the law school, Harvard, the, the student that I learned with didn't go to Harvard. And uh, so he was pointing out steerus in Hilchah How come one judge said this and one judge said, forget steerus. 
So my Chavrus said, he raised the hand and said, simple, this is a king and that's a shtarai. So the professor was Milo Minishtayman. That never occurred to him. It never occurred to him. That's the emes. Of course there's a difference. So he was so surprised. So the kids said, the Bacher said, in Talmud, that's the ABC. This is Takin and There are many differences between the two. So I was going to go to law school. I had to make a living. Shiva was only hiring Europeans. They weren't going to hire any Americans. So I figured law is the closest thing to Talmud. Whoever does well in Gemara will probably do well in law school. So I didn't ask about it. Listen, he came over to me and he said, I understand that you're planning to go to law school. Why well, you really want to become lawyers? So I said, I have no choice. I have to make a living, I have to do something. So I figured that law is closest to the mark. They said he doesn't think it's a good idea because you have to do a lot of reading if you're not really interested in it. So it's going to be very difficult. So I said, I'm going to make a living. So he said, Why don't you go into Chinuch? So I said, But the Yeshiva is not hiring any Europeans. They said, You're going to run out of Europeans. <laughs> there are no more Europeans around. So he told me I should stay on in the Yeshiva and I should teach Kimar. So uh, that's what happened. I stayed on the yeshiva. So those who are upset about the fact that I'm a Rebbe, point the blame to Rabban Lechmusin. He was the one who told me to stay in America. He's responsible for my shidduch also. I was going with a certain girl, and I was going to get engaged. And the boys told Rabban, I didn't ask Rabban, the boys told the boys, the boys told Rabban Lechmusin whom, whom I was going with. And he knew the girl's family, and he knew the girl from Stern College. Rabban used to teach in Stern College. So he came over to me and he said, he understands I'm going with this girl. Very fine girl, a very fine family, but I can do better. That was the end of that. that was the end. There's nothing to discuss. He said, I can do better. That was the end of that girl. So I had then uh, one of the girls I met afterwards. I married. Rabban had a tremendous influence on all of us. Rabban had a tremendous influence. He said, there was so much terror for the Rav. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Rav was very, to me, mystic, very honest, extremely honest, extremely to me, mystic. I remember when Rabban passed away, I knew he wasn't feeling well. So I came to the yeshiva one day, they told me Abba Lechenstein passed away. So I couldn't believe it. So then they said, an hour later, they said, they're going to have people deliver Hespet. And could I deliver Hespet? I couldn't. I couldn't deliver Hespet. I couldn't. I didn't digest it yet that he passed away. I don't know. They had other people deliver Hespet like nothing happened. And how can they deliver Hespet? Mom is Mason with telephone. How can they deliver Hespet? I don't know. I still didn't digest it that he passed away. You have to have uh, you have to have a distance to be able to figure out what the person stood for. I still didn't digest it that he passed away. I have to have more of a distance. And Yeshiva Rashani and Kipper. So, so Baron introduced many of them, not all, many of the Hanhogas of Rav Salvechik into the Dehavani. In many years, they never had it. Rav Salvechik had certain dikdukim, so he would always, uh, when he moved into the neighborhood, after he got married, moved into the neighborhood. Then he introduced all, uh, many Hanhogas, not all, many of the Hanhogas of Rav Salvechik into the Dehavani. I should really uh, think some more about it. I guess I question for Chef Noah. First of all, what can our world do better to avoid such a situation going forward? Does Rav Shechter think that the destination for somebody who claims abuse is the Besden or the police? And finally, in terms of, I think I don't sort of have to speak about this far, but you can't learn from somebody who's uh, 
of course. What about regular books? In this case, they're, they're not sparring, they're just children's books. Yeah. The Gemara is in Chagiga, and the first parak speaks on a in connection with a Pasuk and Nabi that, that, that presents as if HaKadosh Baruch is shedding three tears every day. He's crying about three different things, not necessarily to be taken literally, but there are three great tragedies that HaKadosh Baruch is upset about. So two of the tragedies are the misplaced persons, a person who belonged in learning and went into a secular field, a person who belonged in a secular field went into learning. Some, there are people who went into Chinuch and Rabbanus, and it's a tragedy from day number one. They didn't, they never belonged in Chinuch, never belonged in Rabbanus, so that's a tragedy. A person has to go into the field where he belongs. And the third tragedy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu shed to hear is the Parnas Hamiz Goya Alat Tziba. Unfortunately, every so often, a person is talented, and they appoint them to be the president of an organization or an institution, or they appoint them to a higher position, and, and power corrupts, as the English expression goes, power corrupts. And the person lets it go to his head, and he misuses his position of authority for his own purposes. It's very unfortunate. This fellow, uh, obviously, he misused his, his position of authority, and he, and, he, um, and he used it for his own purposes. That's a great tragedy. In America, when these things would happen, Rabbi Gifter, distant relative, Rabbi Gifter would say, go straight to the police. You don't go to the Rabbanim. The Rabbanim cannot handle the case. We can subpoena witnesses, and no one's going to testify. You have to go straight to the police. The police will make uh, an investigation. There's no din of Mesira here. First of all, I'll explain why. First of all, Mesira means when the Shaloki did. If the government wants to steal from the Jewish wealthy people, and they ask, all the Jews dress the same on Shabbos and the same on the week, you can't tell who's rich and who's poor. So they ask me, who are the rich Jews who have money and stuffed away in their mattress? And I tell them, and then they go and they rob, they steal the government, the government steals their money. So that's the serious you can do. But if I'm going to say someone's cheating on income tax, and he deserves to be put in prison, or he deserves that they should penalize him, he should pay pay for a dollar the hay, whatever the, whatever the law is. And they're not anti-Semitic, let's say in America, the government's not anti-Semitic. Whether you're Jew or non-Jew, they're going to make it, they're going to penalize you. So if you want to punish your kid in, that's not called Messiah. In America, there are two kinds of prisons. There's a federal prison and a state prison. So the federal prison, that's like hotels. That's where they give Daf Yaimi and Glad Kosher. So if someone goes to federal prison, that's not called Messiah. They give them the punishment that it deserves. If they're going to send a person to state prison, State prisons are Hefkin. Federal prison, that's for white collar crimes. So the guy cheats and he steals money, so they go to federal prison. That, that's not called Messiah. He gets the punishment that he deserves. State prison is completely Hefkin. That's for real, real criminals, one who assaults other people. And the state prison, the prison guard can, can harass you and he can kill you and get away with it. He puts a permit up to it. So a state prison is always Messiah. Even if the person deserves to go to prison because he's going to be suffering more than the law requires. The law doesn't, re the law doesn't require that the, heart, that the guard should beat him up. And they will beat him up. The law doesn't require that his cellmate should harass him or extort money from his wife. Whenever you go to state prison, you're going to be suffering more than the law requires. So by definition, if a person is going to be sent to state prison, that's always going to be Messiah. However, no like it's no pilpum, nothing to discuss. I don't want to get to the first pair. You know, a lot of masim and other Jew, unless he's maka is chaveru. If he's beating up someone else, then it's muta to masim. So to masim, then he should go to state prison. It is masim, but it's masim if you did. If the mikvah lady say, sees that the woman going to mikvah has, has marks on her back, obviously she didn't make the marks on herself. Her husband is beating her up. Then she's required by law to master to the government. That's not Messiah. It, it is Messiah, but it's uh, it's his mark. It's Khaver. Someone is beating her up. Obviously, her husband. And he deserves to, to be Nimsa to the government. But these, to these people, as Rabbi Gifta said, he goes straight to the police. If you have a criminal thing like this, you have to go straight to the police. The Rabban do not have the ability, I don't think, on everything. So 
They don't have the ability to handle these kind of cases. Is there a Lisa, is there a Lisa Lashon Hara? There's no Lisa Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara is to protect the innocent people. Chavetz Chaim wrote, Svarim HaLashon Hara, the premise of all of this one, one can ding zich, they say, Rabbi Hut, uh, disagree with the whole premise of the whole Chavetz Chaim. But the Chavetz Chaim's premise in the whole Sefer is that the Yisra Lashon Hara is because of Mazik. The whole Yisra is because he may be, he, 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 he has to protect the innocent people. You shouldn't say negative things about someone and may ruin a job opportunity, may ruin a shidduch, may ruin he deserves a little more covet, they won't give him any covet. It's a din of mazik someone else. So the, the din is that you have to protect innocent people. But over here, over here, the victims of this kind of abuse, the victims of any abuse, a lot of times, <clears throat> the only way, they're so hurt by this, a lot of times the only way for them to get it out of their system, they feel so ashamed and so, and so guilty of what they were involved in. They're victims of his abuse, of the other person's abuse. The only way to get it out of their system is to talk it out to someone else, talk it out to many people. And that's mutter. That's mutter. They have no choice. The Gemara quotes a line from Ben Sira that says, the Oga Balevish, a Pasuk and Mishli also, the Oga Balevish, Yisri Chena. So the Gemara has two interpretations. One interpretation, Yisri Chena Meliboy, you should dismiss it from your mind. The other chapter, Yisri Chena Lacher, you should talk it out. You talk it out, and you get it wrong. You go to the psychiatrist and lay down on a couch. You tell the psychiatrist or the psychologist, or you tell your spouse, or you tell your friends, and you get it out of your system, the aggravation. So the Chafetz Chaim writes, he doesn't think that it's a machloikis, the two pshat of the mar. He thinks it depends how serious the dog is. If it's a slight aggravation, so you say, Chena Meliba, just this business from your mind. Concentrate on something else, and you'll, uh, you'll forget about it. Sure. If it's such a major dog, it's such a major aggravation, like people who are victims of this kind of abuse, it's a major aggravation. You can't dismiss it from your mind. The only way to get it off your chest is by talking it out to other people. You have to talk a lot till you get it off your chest. So he said, that's mutter. He said, then it's mutter. Because that's the toelus lahabo. The din is loshen hor is only mutter. One of the cases that it's mutter is the toelus lahabo. The toelus lahabo is not only the Gemara has the case. I want Gedalia ben Achitam that out to kill you. Watch out. And he didn't listen. The Gemara says, you're not allowed to be in the Kabbalah loshen hor, but lamechash me in the boy. You should be careful. Gedalia ben Achitam was not careful and they killed him. That's why we fast on some Gedal, because they, because they murdered Gedal Yim So not only is it mutter, it's to the listener, I'm warning Gedal Yim, they're out to kill you. Watch out from Pliny, he's going to kill you. If it's Ta'elus Lahabot for the one who's speaking it, it's also mutter, it's also Ta'elus Lahabot. That's what the Chavaz Chaim said. That's the heter, if you have a major aggravation, and you can't just tell the teller, dismiss it from your mind, he has to go to the psychiatrist, or to the spouse, or to his parents or to his friends and never off his chest to talk about it, that's muta the terrorist lahabo. There are people who are abused by others. And when they read about this stuff in the newspaper, they start reliving the whole aggravation that they had all over again. And then when they see these books in other people's homes, as if you're supporting, if, if you, as if you're supporting this kind of abuse, that you have the books from this person. It's not really fair. We, we have to support the victims, even if the people are not victims of this perpetrator, the victims of, of some other person. But they're hurt by this. And they wrote in the newspaper, they wrote about this person, Zatzal, and so on. I met the other day, I met a, a girl. They took me to the, to the Zula. Should know what the Zula is. There's so many young people in Eretz Yisrael from religious families who go off the derech. It's unbelievable. So some of them were abused, and others go off for other reasons. So they have, the OU has a, in the middle of middle of Yerushalayim, they have like a, a club, a room where they have. I went on Wednesday nights, so Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday nights. I have shiurim only for women. The other nights they have for men and for women, but they're careful to separate the men and the women. 
Some of them are on drugs and some of them are drinking, so they're not allowed to do drugs or drinking there. Everything there is uh, on the level. So one of the girls who herself was abused, she was so hurt. She, her whole abuse came back when she was reading this in the newspaper. What's going on with this person? So she sent a long letter to Rav, Rav Tao, who said, oh, bluff. Why will I never? Nothing happened. She sent a long letter. She couldn't, she couldn't contain herself. She started to relive everything that she went through. It's a terrible thing. We have to support the innocent people. We have to support the victims. It's not right to keep the books on the shelf. And then I told over an incident. <clears throat> now we have all of our children. I'm married, we have grandchildren, someone comes from mine, so we usually go to this child, to the other child. Nobody lives near us, so we have to go visit them. Years ago, I used to stay home at home. I used to learn. I used to learn. Sochim, Sukke, Beitza, Moit Button, first pair of Hagiga. And some of the older boys had learned by me in Yeshiva, so they would come to learn with me. They knew that I'm learning anyway. So one of the boys was in business and he used to come. Now he's already so successful. He goes to Eretz Yisrael for base of the Sukkis. But not the company. But he used to come, he wasn't that successful, he used to come to learn with me. So he felt that he owed me a debt of gratitude, which he didn't owe. I told him, I'm learning anyway. You don't owe me any hakoras at So in business, sometimes you get uh, tickets for concerts or something for less expensive bargains. So he bought two tickets for myself and my wife to go to a concert in Carnegie Hall, Leil Hoshana Rabba. Leil Hoshana Rabba, go to a concert in Carnegie Hall. We had no choice, we had to go. And we had to say that we enjoyed it very much, which we didn't. So we went there and they were playing a German composer, Wagner. And I felt as if I could feel the Nazis marching. And the Nazis, as if their boots were clicking. It was such harsh music. And there's a Pasik in Parshish Bereshis that says, when Kharish Boch formed the Marishan, so when you blow, when you blow, let's say you're making a glass bottle. And you blow, so you blow from your from your kishpis, you blow from your from your air in your lungs. Akhadish Bokh blew a lakus into other marish, and that's why he was telling Malakim, because Khadish Bokh blew. And this is true regarding any, any woman, any artist. When an artist makes a painting, or he composes music, or he writes a novel, or he does, or a person says a shtikal tayra, he puts his heart and his soul into it. And when you listen to the music by a German composer, he put his heart and soul into it, and you can hear, I can hear the Nazis marching. I can hear the Nazis marching. When you look at a painting, by someone, he put his whole heart and soul into it. I recommend, I wouldn't, the Jewish heart and soul is supposed to be different from the Jewish heart and soul. We just read in the Kriya Satur on Shabbos, I think, the Hiflesi ben Mitzrayim ben Yisrael, the Jews in the different, in the Goyim are totally different. So Lechik once said, it, he heard an expression from his grandfather, at time, Salavechik, there are long bridges and there are short bridges, it's impossible to build a bridge long enough to gap the bridge between a Yisrael and a Nochri. It's such a difference. The difference between Yisrael and Amin is like Olach The difference between night and day. Totally different. The Jew is born differently, he lives differently, he dies differently, and he's buried differently. You're not allowed to bury a Jew in a Goyish cemetery. The Jew is totally different from the Goyish. Um, so she has a famous brochure, a famous essay. And Abraham Avinu was negotiating to buy the Mora Samach Pela to bury his beloved wife, Sora. So they said, We will be mechabed you. You can bury your wife. He says, no. The Jews can't be buried in the Goyish cemetery. He said, The Jews are toshavim. We work along with the Umas Oilam. To solve the medical problems, to solve the social problems, to solve poverty. The Jews get, the Jews are way less than 1% of the world population, they get over 22% of Nobel Awards. The Nobel Awards are not decided by Jews. 
and the percentage of Orthodox Jews who get Nobel Awards is higher than the percentage of Orthodox in the Jewish population. I think there are four women away Shaitlin who got Nobel Awards. One of them, my father-in-law was a Rabbi Yalov in upstate New York. He was a rabbi under the communists. He was a rabbi in America. The Jews do their share. We do more than our share in Tikkun Ha'ilam and helping out the world. That's why they get so many Nobel Awards. So Avramavina says, I'm a Teshav. I work along with it, but at the same time, I'm a Ger. Avramavina says, we're born differently, we live differently, we die differently, very differently. I can't bury my wife in the Galatian cemetery. Totally different. The Jews are, have different, different interests in the world. We work along with the Umas Olam, but at the same time, we have totally different, everything is different by the Jews. So you don't want to have, you don't want to take the heart and soul of a Nachri and incorporate it into your heart and soul. We shouldn't listen to jazz or to music that's composed by the Nachri. They put their heart and soul into it. We shouldn't be interested in paintings that are painted by the Nachrim. They can put, sometimes they have an edel heart and soul, sometimes they have edel music, but a lot of times they have harsh, they have harsh music and harsh paintings and harsh novels and so on. I think it's a big problem. Moshe Feinstein has a tshuva. They tell him, Moshe was such a holy tzaddik. Moshe was so, such a holy tzaddik. The people that had smicha from Moshe, when they had an, a case of Nishishisha Zinsa, had an issue of homosexuality or something, they couldn't go to Moshe. Moshe couldn't understand what you're talking about. I remember there was one boy in Wayu who fell in with a Nobi Hasheker before your time. I don't think you were yet in Shiva. I fell in Mamish with a Nobi Hasheker. I'm a sugar. I'm a sugar. The guy already dropped it. He was such a sugar. So that he got to Moshe and Feinstein involved. So how to go to Moshe and explain what's going on. Moshe didn't understand Gilia, Arias, with married women, with single girls. Terrible. But Moshe was such a holy to me, he decided he couldn't understand what I was talking about. He couldn't talk to him. But Moshe has taught me them. He gave smicha to some of them. When they had a case of Nation Sishas Insa, they had a case of homosexuality, they had to go to Rabbi Yaki Kamenetsky. Moshe didn't understand what they were talking about. He was a holy tzaddik. So Moshe has a tshuva that's printed. After he printed it, he didn't understand who they were talking about. They asked him an abstract. There's a certain composer of music. He used to be, he used to work with Lubavitch. He had a lot of photographs with this fellow sitting next to Lubavitch and Rebbe. He used to compose beautiful Lagunim. And then he was, in a certain sense, he to the Tarvis Roar. He was hanging out with women, with girls, and he kept on composing. So they asked that Moshe, are we permitted to sing the Lagunim that he composed when he was still a tzaddik? Beautiful Lagunim. So Moshe has all children's mutter. After he printed the tshuva, he didn't know who he was talking about. He wrote a tshuva. Aaron Salavechi told us, so he was there when they told Moshe who they're talking about, the famous uh, Balmanani. Aaron Moshe said, he was taken from that. He didn't realize that that's who they were talking about. A famous, uh, ba- everybody sings his Kabbalah Shabbos. That he composed after. After he was the Yotzeb Dabbas, not before. So Moshe has a whole tshuva about that. That the Gemara has it been, say, Vitar Shekos Vemin, Yisarev. What do you mean you saw it? So the Pashim shot, you're committed to burn it because it doesn't have Kedusha Sefer So there's no reason of Hasakem uh, Lashamakech, Hashirem Tisru from Baish. Hasakem Lashamakech, that's a Sefer Torah. But if you have a Sefer Torah, it was written by a Christian, meaning by the early Christian. Min, they say, is a Russian Torah, Mikat Yeshua Natsu. So the early Christians were me. So when they wrote Yud Kei Vavkem, the Sefer Torah, they had a mind the shame Osa Huish, they had a mind the shame Nashkin. So of course he served. So Moshe quotes the Rambam, said the Tosh Kosov is a mitzvah to burn it, in order that there shouldn't be any zecher to the person. So Moshe understood that the nigunim that the fellow composed after he was yotz in the Tavros Roh, he shouldn't use. He should only be allowed to sing the nigunim that he composed before. We have such an idea of learning. The more comments on the Posik and Novi, it's one of the half 
Torah Yimakshim Apiu, Ki Malach Hashem Tzavokasu. So the Gemara says in Chagigim, Harab Doim Hala Malach Hashem Tzavokas, Yimakshim Torah Yimakshim Apiu, Lim Lava Yimakshim. If you feel that the Rebbe is angelic, he's a holy tzad, not an angel, then you've actually turned it people. You love all your action. So let's say everybody uses Jastro. Jastro was a conservative rabbi. So how do we use Jastro? So the Postum say in the earlier day, you've actually turned me people if it's an original Kiddush. Jastro just writes what the words mean. It's not an original Kiddush. And he tells you where the word appears. And the Babli and the Shalmi and the Tagumim. So that's not me people. But if a person is going to say original Kiddush, he puts his heart and soul into it. He just wrote a dictionary. It's not his heart and soul. But he's saying original, like you have an original com- composition of music, original artistic uh, painting or something like that, or, or, or a novel or something. So you put your heart and soul into it. Like the pap of Ayyipat Piyap of Nishmas Chaim, the Rebbe Shalom blew Elokus into the Marishan. So when a, when a Talmud Chacham says original Torah, you should only listen if he's Kemalach Hashem Tzvakas. If he doesn't seem to be Kamala Hashem Tzvakas, you shouldn't take anything from him that's, that's original. Because he's going to put his heart and soul into it. You don't, have, you don't want to have the heart and soul of that person. We don't want to have the heart and soul of the Nochrim. We don't want to have the heart and soul of the of the Baal. Part of it, I think part of the problem is, Absolute Richard has one of his published essays about this, we sometimes exaggerate the greatness of people. We shouldn't deify human beings. If a person is a, a holy tzaddik, he's a holy tzaddik. You have to make him into, he's not God himself. We shouldn't exaggerate it. We exaggerate sometimes too much the greatness of people, we exaggerate. So then it's a tremendous letdown when we see the person fooled us all along, that he was really a low life. We deify you and be. That's not right. You should have respect for Tamir Chacham, but not uh, not Belishi. It shouldn't be a uh, Guzman. It's very unfortunate, very sad. The Navi says that uh, before the Geula, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. will purify the Jewish people. Sira called the Delayach. So this is uh, apparently that's what some Rabbanim pointed out. Apparently, we're getting closer to the Gulas. Hakadosh Baruch Hu has to clean out the psolas from the Klal Yisrael. There's a lot of psolas. We have to get rid of. There's a lot of. There are a lot of fine tzaddikim. We shouldn't exaggerate their great. We shouldn't deify them. Uh, so she has a published essay that's entitled Cheta HaKovit Keldo Shel Doreinu, a major sin of the people of our generation, that they exaggerate too much. He talks about Roosevelt, that the Jews trusted Roosevelt so much, and Roosevelt was such an anti-Semite. He could have saved many Jews' lives in the Second World War. His wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, in her autobiography, she writes that she pleaded with her husband he should do something to save the Jews in, in Europe. He wasn't interested, couldn't care less. And the Jews believed in Roosevelt, he was the Mashiach Hashem. So Rav Salechik wrote about Roosevelt, about the President Roosevelt. But unfortunately, it's a little bit about Rabbonim also. People deify the Rabbonim. It's too much. Well, come on, they exaggerate so much. It's a very sad situation. Zero hard question. Um, to what extent should or can Muhammad play a role in Sakhala? Shemitah. That's the Raman by Shemitah. The Raman often disagrees with the Gaonim. He'll, he'll often quote a Psak on the Gaonim. We don't disagree with the Gemara. Whenever the Gemara comes to Maskana, we follow Rabbinu Ravashi Soifai Ro. Gemara quotes a Pasuk in Parshat Bereshis. Ze Sefer told us of him. Sounds like the Torah is telling us that the Reishis of the Chamishu Chamishu Torah is a history book of mankind. Yes, if it told us that Mar says the Bible is a, set, is a book of human history, fully written. The chronology is out of order, it's missing. So, how can it be? 
So Gemara says it doesn't mean that the Bereshis or Chumash is a book on human history. It's referring to the fact that when Adam Arishan was, the their first day when Adam Arishan was created, HaKadosh Baruch Hu showed him his plan and history. The Rabbi Shalom had Sifra Shal Adam Arishan, the book that he showed to Adam Arishan, Dor Dor B'Doshav, Dor Dor B'Chachamav, Dor Dor B'Seifrov. <coughs> so the Gemara has uh, Rabbi Shmuel were both contemporaries. They were both living in Eretz Yisrael and they both decided they have to go to Bavel to establish yeshivas, because the Jews in Babel were very religiously oriented, but there were big Amaratsi. There was no learning in Babel. They used to violate Basim B'cholim and Shabbos and Kasha. They violated everything. They didn't know the deal. But after Rav established the yeshiva in one, in one city, Shmuel established the yeshiva in the other city, they raised the level of learning. It was, it was Gevaldik. And Mar said, the also Rav the Babel. After Rav and Shmuel came to Babel, the level of learning was so much higher that people were observing. They knew what they're supposed to observe. So the Gemara says, Rab succeeded in getting smicha from Rabbi Yudha before he left the bubble. And Shmuel, every day something else came up. He didn't get smicha. And then once he go to bubble, the boat was leaving. So he went to bubble. Once he go to bubble, you can't get smicha. You can only confer smicha if both the masmich and the samach are living in Eretz Yisrael. But if uh, not both in Eretz Yisrael, once he went to bubble, he can't get smicha. So the far far. So Rabbi Anasi felt bad that uh, because of circumstances, uh, Shmuel didn't get smicha. So someone told Rabbi Anasi, don't feel bad. I saw snippets from the Sefer Shalad and Marishan. That's what it says. It's going to be in one generation, that'll be Rabbi Shmuel. And Rabbi's going to get smicha. Shmuel will not get smicha. That was the Ben Shalom's plan from the very outset. Rabbi got smicha. So the Mashua said, that's my Hilchas the Rabbi Yisuri. Because Rabbi got smicha. Shmuel didn't get smicha. So in that Sifr Shalad it says also, Rabbi Nebrabashi Soif Hayroh, that's the end of the period of the Hayroh. Hayroh means Psak in Torah Shabal Peh. We assume that even though Rabbi Ranasi edited the Mishnayis, they still recited the Mishnayis Baal Peh. It wasn't written down yet. That's how most of the Achreinim assume and most of the history books assume. Torah Shabal Peh was still not written down. They were reciting Mishnayis Baal Peh. Till the days of Rabbi Ne Rabasha. Rabbi Rabasha edited Talmud Babli, but it wasn't written down till way later in the days of the Gaonim. The days of the Gaonim, there was a big machlekas, whether they should write down the Talmud Babli. The ma'asal is that they wrote it down. If they wouldn't write it down, who would have remembered the whole Talmud Babli? You have to have a photographic memory. It's impossible. To have the whole uh, correspondence for the days of the Gaidim, the Machlekes, whether they should write down the Talmud Babli. The more a lot of times has in Sufi, what did Rabbi Noah say? What do you mean if they wrote the Talmud Babli? What's the Sufi, what they said? The answer it wasn't written until way later. It was written in the day, days of the Gaidim. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Noah Soif Hayroah, means that those who follow Rabbi Noah have no right to argue with them. Anybody from the days of Yeshua ben Nun to the days of Rabbi Noah Abashi, al it's one level of Chachmei HaMasorah. So those who trans- received and transmit the Torah Shemal Peh, Baal Peh. If the days of Abin Rabash, it wasn't fully Baal Peh, because they were learning Mishnah from a text. Today we give a share from Gemara from a text, from my Ramah, from the Mishkan Brewer, from the Shulchan Aruch, everything we give, everything with the Chaksa. So we did, we're still trans, we're still Chachmei HaMasar, but it's a lower level of Chachmei HaMasar. So those who have the lower level of Chachmei HaMasar, because they didn't receive it Baal Peh, they received it with Chaksa, they have no right to disagree, but those who preceded them had the higher level of Chachmah so, But after the days of Rabbi Rabashi, everybody has a right to disagree with each other. So the Ramon Chayish and Mishpat has that same concept. If you have a Tshuva Sagrayim and you want to disagree, you have a right to disagree. You may be making a major mistake. So the Ramon says, he's quoted from earlier, but you should really consult contemporaries of yours, tell them what to go and say, tell them what you say. Bring the rayas. But if your contemporaries think that you're right, they have a right to paskan against the Goyim. So the Ramam often feels free to disagree with the Goyim. So the Ramam had a machlekes with the Goyim regarding Shnita. The din is, there was a machlekes hatanoim, Rabbi Yudel HaChachamim, during the Vaisvishim period. The account 7777, seven, 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 every 17 year of Shnita, they say, count 50, 50, 50, 50. The year is a blank year. You count seven Shnitas, 49 years, then 50th year is a blank, then you count 7777. Seven, seven, seven. You go 50 50. That's how we pass it. Yevil is a blank year. And Rabbi was of the opinion you always count 7 7. 
And the Yovel is the first year of the next Shnita cycle. So the next Shnita cycle, you're only going to have five years that you got to plan. You won't have six years. We don't pass on like that. So the Gemara says, even towards the end of the Vaisvishan period, when there was several of the Shvatim already were sent into Golos, and they were no longer observing Yovel, because the Pasuk says, by, the Pasuk by Yovel is on the Liberty Belt. I used to live when I was a child, I lived in Pennsylvania. We used to live near in Philadelphia, we lived near the Liberty Bell. So the Liberty Bell was commissioned to be made in Europe by the Jewish community of Pennsylvania. They were so happy about freedom of religion. So they put the bus across and draw bars and Choya Shrev, Asher Parkland, Liberty, throughout the land and to all its inhabitants. So the Mon, the end of Erechon, talks about that expression. L'chol Yashvev, what does that mean, L'chol Yashvev? I should proclaim liberty throughout the land, means I am capable of living, but every day he goes free. What does it mean, L'chol Yashvev? Not everybody is in every day. What it says, what it means is, B'zman she'chol Yashvev ha'aleha. If some of the Shvatim already went into Golos, so then you don't, you don't observe Yoifa. So towards the end of the Vaisvishan period, the Gemara says they didn't observe Yoifa already, but they still counted Yoifa as a black year. Mono Yoifa is the Kaddish Mita, in order to push off the next Mita. You don't count 770 the other way. You count 50-50. Even though you're not going to observe Yoifa, you're only going to observe Shmita, but you count Yoifa as a black year to push off the next, the next Mita. So the Raman writes, the same thing should be true today. We don't observe Yoivah because we don't have Chol Yoshvah Ha'aleho, but you shouldn't count 7, 7, 7, 7, the other way. You should count 50, 50, 50, 50. And the 50th year should be a blank year. But then the Raman says, this is a disagreement with the God. And the God him say you count 7, 7. The Raman thinks that it doesn't make sense. Then the Raman says, however, I have to give in on the issue to the God because the, the Gaonim lived in Eretz Yisrael. They were Gaonim. The name of the yeshiva was Yeshiva's Gaon Yaakov, the pride of the Jewish people. Learning of the Torah is the pride of the Jewish people. The head of the yeshiva was called Rosh Yeshiva's Gaon Yaakov. Some of them were Taki Gaonim, they knew how to learn. And some of them were fundraisers, and some of them were neither successful in learning, no successful in fundraising. That's why you have a lot of ridiculous Jewish that just don't make any sense at all. Some of them were presidents. Yeshiva University, we had some presidents were fundraisers and some presidents were Tamil Chacham. Okay. Some are sitting Tamil Chacham. They, were, they weren't all Tamil Chacham. And some were not, not so successful, not in learning and not in fundraising. They will be close now. So the Ramam says the Goyim lived, they call them Goyim, they were called the full titles, Rosh Hashim and They weren't all such guys. So the Ramam says the Goyim lived in Eretz Yisrael and all the people were observing the Psaq of the Gun. Why is not Shai Lachat Pami? Shaila came up and the going in Pascha like this and I Pascha forget. Every seven years they observe, they never count the 50th year as a black year. So he says he has to give in because the minic, the practice by the Orthodox Jews, the time of practice, plays a significant role in being Kaveh the Halach. If the whole Kaveh does like this, he's not going to argue with the whole Kaveh so. so the writer disagrees with the Rambam and he says, no, you should not follow the God, you should follow the Rambam. So Rachel said to the best of his recollection, this is the only place where there's a machlok against the Ramam and the Ravid. The Ramam says, you're not passing like the Ramam. And the Ravid is massive. No, you have to pass them like the Ramam. So you should count the blank here. That's why in every luach that it says, Tav Shin Pei Beis, is a Shas Hashmit, a Kifi Mine Kagonim. Because according to the Rambam, and the Ravid thinks we should follow the Ramam, not follow the Ramam, this year is not Shmit to you. Because you have to throw in every angle, you have to throw in a block here every 15 years. So precedent sometimes plays a significant role in Paschalisha. If it's president, the whole Klaus Israel does like that. The whole Klaus Israel live in Eretz Israel, where Shmita was observed. All the Jews followed that Psat, so that's the Psat Hamakub. But uh, it doesn't always. We have a lot of times that we, we don't follow precedent. The Gemara says in Swacham and the Bais Rishon, they did Nisach in one way. For four to ten years, Bais Rishon did Nisach in the way Shlomo Melech Paskin. Then there was a Golis bubble for 70 years. Then when they rebuilt the Beis Amig, when they built the second Beis Amig, there were many old timers there, 80 years and older. I'm 80 years old. I remember things from 70 years ago. When I was 10 years old. So they were old timers, they remembered the way they uh, they remembered the way they did Nisachayan. And they passed them by Shani, you do Nisachayan differently. 
they ignored the whole precedent of the first 410 years. That's the end of the day with the Kim Chai. That's, you have to follow the Chachamim in your generation. Even on the Baish Mishan, they interpreted the Pesukim one way, the Bashin. So this Hasem is on the Gemara Zoch, and the Kashmir for 410 years. They were never yet to the midst of Nisach Hayyan. He did it incorrectly. So he gives an answer of Pichasidus, which he usually doesn't do in this Hasem is on the Gemara. So Hasem is on the Gemara. He's learning. He's lumped this. He doesn't, doesn't go into Chasidus. He didn't have an answer. The Pashta says that's what it means. Hey, you need to do the the Rahalochis you have in the Mishnayis. The Psak then says, Bezin Shalach Reim Amru. The Gemara calls the Mishnah Mishnah and the Mishnah Reina. The consensus changed over the years. During my lifetime, the consensus changed in a few issues. One of the issues is Hilchas Avelus, it comes up every so often. A relative dies in a distant country, and the person is not going to go to the funeral. Then I can have the funeral till tomorrow. So those who were there, at the funeral, they don't begin to be to lift the steam sagel, to lift the nikur. But those who don't go, so that was a big machlokes between the Nitziv and his son-in-law, Rabbi Fal Valojan, Rabbi Fal Shapiro. That was Rabbi Chaim Salvechim's father-in-law. Rabbi Fal was his son-in-law, and that's it. I think it was the son-in-law of Rabbi Chaim. So the Nitziv was of the opinion that if even if you're not going to the funeral, you don't begin shiva to lift the nikur. You don't begin right away. And so before the Second World War, most of the Boston held locked in the Yusuf. And, uh, and after the war, the consensus changed. And now most of soon like Rabbi Fuel Valojana, that you start the, the Avelis right away. If you're not going to the Guru, you start the Avelis right away. Mishnah, you have a lot like that. Mishnah, Shani, Mishnah, because they really did with Kim Chaim. In one generation, they passed in one way, the other generation, they passed in the other way. I remember in the life of Eichmann Trav, this reminds me of Eichmann Trav. In the yeshiva, when I came in the first day, we, we were giving shia by uh, doing COVID by uh, Zoom. And then they told me they made a special box for me like this, and I came in, so they took a photograph of it. So my wife said, it reminds me of the Eichmann Trav. They had big walls like this, that they shouldn't kill them. They shouldn't murder Eichmann. <laughs> So remember when they had the Eichmann trial, so the, um, what do you call him, the district attorney, the one who was accusing him of murder, so he was called, what was his name? I forgot already his name. Whatever. So he, so he, he quoted a psaac from a judge in Idaho. He didn't know how to pronounce Idaho. So he's, in English, a lot of words he pronounced Malayal. And in Hebrew, he pronounced all the words Malayal. So he said, Idaho. <laughs> so the judge had to correct him. No, Tagid, Idaho. You don't pronounce it Idaho. He didn't know how to pronounce the name Idaho. He was quoting a judge. Who cares what the judge in Idaho said? It, it, it's so crucial what, what the what the what the was. You say what you think the Psak is over here. We don't always follow precedent. If you, look, if you look at the Mishnah Brewer, the Mishnah Brewer reversed the Psaq HaMakul for centuries on every other page in the Shulchan Aruch. There was a, I didn't have a Mishnah Brewer until six years after I got married. Oh, I bought my birthday present. When I was growing up, we never had a Mishnah Brewer. There were no Mishnah Brewers in the Yeshiva based marriage. We didn't have a Mishnah Brewer. When Rabbi Zalveshi gave Shira and Arachayim, we used the Magen Avram and the Beer Agra. We didn't have a Mishnah Pur. We used the Machta Shekel, the Pima We didn't have a Mishnah Pur. Then my wife bought me a birthday present. Mishnah Pur became popular after the war because so many Tamir Chachamim were killed. So many, so they were such a Churban Atayra. The Tamir Chachamim who restored the Torah in Europe and in America and Eretz as well, everyone had a Shaykhaz with the Chavetzchah. Either they had learned in Raden as young as youngsters. Or they went to the Chavetz Chaim for a bracha to be put from the draft. Or they went for a to the Chavetz Chaim. Everybody had shaykhs to the Chavetz Chaim. So because they wrote kafruf to the Chavetz Chaim, and these were the ones who rebuilt the Torah all over the world. So that's why the Mishnah Guru became so popular uh, after the war. Before the war, I don't think it was so popular. My impression is that not. My impression is that not. So if you if you if you're used to learning shulchan and you get Mishnah Brewer, 
It reverses the Psaq HaMakubal for centuries and every other page in the Shukhanah. Why? The new Svarim, uh, the Maimah Motchai. Maimah Motchai was just printed in France. If you, how did he get it? He lived in Poland. How did he get the Maimah Motchai? I don't know. He reverses the Psaq. It was written by a Svardish of Maimah Motchai. Fantastic. He discussed every Taz, every Magan Avram. He can't he takes into consideration every possible sort. All the new Meiris that were printed, the Maram Chalav, all the new Kisvayad from the Bahag, the Mishnah Bur reverses the Psaq HaMakubo based on the new Achrayinim and based on the new Kisvayad of the Rishayinim. That's one of the Hasagans that the Chazanish has against the whole style of the Mishnah Bur. Why did he reverse the Psaq? There must have been negative, I can't say, there must have been negative as a reason for Hashemayim. Why did these Kisvayad of the Rishayinim were, were uh, lost for so many generations, that we should work out the psaq without them. So why should we reverse the psaq now? So Mishnah Guru reverses the psaq HaMakubal. He, he doesn't care about the precedent. He ignores the precedent. And in fact, the Mishnah Guru, Mishnah Guru is totally, he writes a lot of things in the Mishnah Guru. It doesn't correspond to what they did in, in Rabbi. He didn't follow the Mishnah Guru in Rabbi. There was a, there was a rabbi, in Baltimore, I forgot his name, maybe one of his grandchildren is here. There was a rabbi in Baltimore. Before the war, it was a style, a whole, there were Americans who went to learn in Europe, they learned to Miri Shiva, they learned to Radin. Different, different, they learned by Shimon, by Baruch Ben, they learned by different Gedalim. So this, Rabbi Gifta was one of them. He was an American. He was born in the South. He used to speak with a Southern draw. And his Talmudian, these close to me, them all speak with a southern draw when they speak English. One of them lives here in Eretz Israel. I forgot his name. Lef. I think the name is Lef. He talks just like Rabbi Gifta with the southern draw. Unconsciously. He picked up so much Rabbi Gifta, he picked up the southern draw also. So this, this rabbi from Baltimore went to learn the tells for eight years, and then what broke out? He went back to America. So he wrote a book in English, very fascinating book. I think it's called Minhag Litter, or Minhag Litter, something like that. And he writes what the Minhag used to be, and he says, after the war was over, all the yeshivas were destroyed. And when they wanted to restore the yeshivas, so they looked in the Mishnah Brewer to reinstitute everything that was, and they do everything like the Mishnah Brewer said. They never did that in the Yeshiva. Even in Aradin, they didn't do it like that. The Aruch HaShulchan always writes what the meaning was in Litta. The Mishnah Brewer ignores certainly what the meaning was. He puts in all kinds of things that, that, that they never observed them all. This rabbi in Baltimore wrote this book, Ben Hage Litta. So he writes, his impression is that the Yeshiva in Cleveland, it tells the Yeshiva in Cleveland, is closest to the lit fish and sheep is more so than all the others. All the others follow the Mishnah Bur, which no similarity, living or dead, doesn't necessarily represent what life was like in, in the yeshivas in Europe. Yeah, we don't always follow precedent. Maybe we should, but uh, the Ramam ignores a lot of times precedent. That's what you think is right. And you can reverse the Psaq HaMakubo. We have a lot of times. We reverse the psalm. The Ramah writes about the Shemitah counting seven seven. We follow that. The Ramah who says we should not follow him, we follow the, the Gaidim seven seven, because that's what all of Klaliso did. That's what they did by the Nusach Hayyayin, and they did change it. And, I don't know, but uh, we don't always follow uh, the the common practice. You have to reopen all the issues in every generation. You have to reinvestigate everything. When Yaakov was about to go down to Egypt, when he heard that Yosef is still alive, so it says, something like that. So Rashi quotes from the Medrash, Rashi al is always quoting from Tanoim, from Midrash, and from Gemaris. When Rashi talks about Diktuk, that's on his own. But when he says something of content, of significance, he's not saying on his own, he's always quoting. So in that passage, Rashi quotes the Medrash, the Horus Lufon of Goshna, Yehuda should go establish a base Hayra. They should establish a location where they're going to pass in all the shyness. When they pass in the shyness, they didn't pass in all the shyness. The answer is you go to a new country, 
the circumstances, the circumstances are always different. And it could be that the psak that you had for so many generations in Eretz Canaan, Eretz Israel, no longer applies. If you live in a different country, all you need is sometimes one slight detail of the case is different, so the whole thing is different. A lot of people think that they're following the tradition, their family tradition, and they're violating the because one, one slight practice is different, so the whole psak is wrong. All psak is wrong. Just as an example, it says that during the lifetime of Rabbam Avinu, there was a famine in Eretz Israel. So Abraham Avinu went down to Egypt. So it says, during the lifetime of Yitzchak, Yitzchak follows all the traditions of Abraham Avinu. They blished him, plugged up, they stopped up all of the wells that Abraham Avinu dug. I sat and blished him. So Yitzchak digs the wells and he gives exactly the same names, everything, Masora. He does everything in the tradition that you. Avraham Avinu did. So when there was a famine during the lifetime of Yitzchak, said, Vayeri Yitzchak, Vayeri Rabbaretz, Malvad Horov HaRishan Shehoyam Me'avra, Vayeri Yitzchak, Vayeri Melech Melech, Tishkin Berorah, why did he go to Chevel Azo? He was on his way to go down to Egypt, to follow in the footsteps of Avraham Avinu. He follows all the traditions from Avraham Avinu. So HaKadosh Baruch says, wrong. You're not allowed to go down to Egypt. Your father was not a carbon oil. You are who is a carbon oil. If you go to Egypt, you'll be Nipsa be Yitzhak. You're not allowed to go to Chutzlurz. That's why Avram Avinu said, he has to get a Shidduch. He sent them, he has Avram to get a Shidduch. He said, Rakhaz Bani Al Tashim Shama. Yitzhak didn't realize that. The father said, I can't send him Chutzlurz because he's a carbon oil. He'll be Nipsa be Yitzhak. I have a lot of people in our generation. My grandfather is one of the founders of the Aguda, and that's why I belong to Aguda. What do you have in that shiny? Aguda, when it was founded, there was no Medina, there was no Mohammed Shesha time, and everything is different, totally different. That's not in the family tradition. Maybe your grandfather would be the first one to leave the Aguda today. I, I, my grandfather is one of the founders of Mizrahi, I belong to Mizrahi. The Mizrahi, that Mizrahi is not totally different. It's not the same thing, just the same name. Mizrahi, Aguda, same. But all the politics, everything is different. The whole world keeps on changing. You can't, you, people think superficially that the following the tradition, and a lot of times it's not. The circumstances are so different, you have to change the psa. That's why Michael Avino had to send Yehuda, Lahoris Lafon of Goshna, to reinvestigate all the issues to see, do we still observe the mitzvahs the same way we always did? That's what the whole Shadis and Chilis literature is about. Moshe's Chilis and all the others, we know all the din of Mishul Chanaf, all the din of still applied this man as that. In America, everything is different. So maybe you have to apply a different sif in Mishul Chanaf. So a lot of times a Moshe says it's different, a lot of times says no, he thinks it's uh, sufficiently similar. The din should be the same. We don't always follow precedent. Sometimes it's if, if it's clear that all of Klal Yisrael is observing like that, then we do. That's what the Ramam says by the, by the Yodel year. We don't count the black here because that was the minute, Kanafuts, all the Jews followed that. Seven, 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 seven. You don't count 50, 50 anymore. Why not? Why is it different from the end of the Vice Vision? So that the uh, Rapaim explains in a safer way. But uh, basically, we don't follow. Mishnah Guru reversed the Psakam Kubal on every page. But Moshe reversed the Psakam Kubal also on a lot of Moshe Feinstein. He got away with it. He was a very humble man. Moshe was extremely humble extremely humble person. But he was convinced of his opinions. So he got away with it. People, a lot of people didn't realize he wasn't a dramatic speaker. He used to speak uh, under his bunches. He used to speak, he, he wasn't a forceful speaker. So people thought he was just saying over the din. He was a very, uh, he was a revolutionary. He has a lot of very original ideas in his truths. He changed his obsession a lot of din. Now, so Rechik was extremely traditional. When he would give up Sak, it would be basically, it was closer to the Shulchan Aruch. A lot of times we would wonder, where did Rabbi Saul Rechik get this practice from? Then we look at the Shulchan Aruch. That's what it said in Shulchan Aruch. He was following what it said. We, we were so used to seeing other things, we were surprised. Why is he doing everything different from everybody else? Then we look at the Shulchan Aruch. That's what it says in the Shulchan Aruch. He, he used to be a big stickler. And all the men hug him in the Shulchan Aruch that the Mishnah Bura says that nobody does that anymore. No, instead of Shulchan Aruch, he would insist you have to follow the men hug him in the Shulchan Aruch. He would be, Rabbi Zalvesh would be a very dramatic speaker and, and he would walk around and fancy words, but he was just saying all what it said in the Shulchan Aruch. 
So people thought he was making up new dinam. He wasn't making up, he was just saying over what it said in Shulchan I remember there was one drosh of observation. He used to have yard site on Gimel Shvat every year. Yard site for his father. So every year he would give a, a drosh for four hours. Two hours halacha and two hours agoda. The agoda was based on the halacha. So there was one theme that he would speak about uh, every so often about Hashiva uh, Sa'adam, human dignity. So he would say, Who's a mes mitzvah? A mes she'en lo kovrim. Who's a mes she'en lo kovrim? A bum. A Jewish bum, a tramp, he floats around. Nobody knows who he is. You know, he's Jewish, probably not so observant. And the coin has to, kain God. So he would give a marshal. The kain God was preparing Shilas Yamim, Kaidim Yamaki, Purim, Afish, and Kain God. The base of the Lishka's Pahedrin. He's preparing for seven days to do that way down Yamaki Purim. Then the kain God is, is walking, uh, is walking, and he bumps into a nice mitzvah. He has to take, has to be metam into the nice mitzvah. And all the preparations that he did to do that way down Yamaki Purim, he has to give it up. And the and other one, Amidu Kain, you prepare another kind to take over in case the Kain God becomes stomach. So this was his marshal. The Kain God was preparing to do that. And then he's the nice mitzvah. Who is the nice mitzvah? A bum that nobody knows who it is. In the Jewish religion, we don't distinguish uh, between a professor, a big Rosh Hashiva, and a plain Jew. Everyone has a chashiva of Adam. Atam Kareem Adam, Einu Masalim Kareem Adam. So Tyson says, Ha Adam can refer to a guy. Why hard them? The guy believes some people are very important, but the hey, how you do us? They, they get chashivas, but a plain, nobody doesn't have chashivas. And the Jewish people hold that every human being is important. Every human being is created with Salamaki. So they once wrote this up in Hapardis. Hapardis was a Torah journal in America. They once wrote up Rav Salvation's brush. So someone wrote in a letter to the editor, that was a monthly, Hapardis was a monthly Torah journal. Someone wrote a letter to the editor, so he wanted to attack Rabbi Soloveitchik to say what an emergency is. So they didn't want to write it like that. So they wrote, the guy who wrote up the drosha must have been an Amor. It meant Rabbi Soloveitchik was an Amor. What do you mean the Kain Godel is Matamita Meis Mitzvah on Yom Kippur? You don't bury anybody on, on Yom Kippur. You're not going to bury him. What do you mean the Kain Godel? Kain Godel is surrounded with Kahanim all over him. There's, he's not walking by himself on Yom Kippur. The whole case is ridiculous. So someone wrote this in letter to the editor, so they printed this second, the next month. So the next month, someone else sends in a letter to the editor. Rabbi Salavetri was just quoting a Tysus in Nazir. Tysus gives that motion. And all that writing is the Kasha and Tysus. What do you mean you can't go on the Yom He doesn't walk by himself. He don't bury anybody. Rabbi Salavetri was very dramatic, and he thought he was making up things. It was just saying, oh, what it says in Shulchan what it says in the Gemara. It was dramatic about it. So they thought Rabbi Salavetri was changing things. A revolutionary, Rabbi Salvechi, was much more of a stickler to the dinim and the psakim and the menhagim and the shorf than Rabbi Moshe. Rabbi Moshe was the revolutionary. Rabbi Moshe wasn't so dramatic when he spoke, and he spoke softly, and he was extremely humble, so the people uh, had the mistaken impression that everything he's saying is traditional. Rabbi Moshe was a bigger revolutionary than Rabbi Salvechi. Rabbi Salvechi, his unique, his uniqueness was, he would say, oh, Rabbi with such a knack, he would really make sense out of it. He said, over the Ktsai is better than the He said, over the Nesivas and the Avnei Nezah. He said, over better than the Avnei Nezah, he says. But he picked up all of his ideas from me. He didn't invent ideas. He picked up from all the Svar. It's a big question. When do you follow uh, precedent and when not? For many generations, Ashkenazi will follow the Ashkenazi Psaq, and the Svar will follow the Svar Psaq. Until finally came the Shach. What, you always vote, the Republicans always vote, Republican, the Democrats always vote, you have to vote whoever is right. Why should the Ashkenazim always vote for the Ashkenazi Psaq? So the Shach sometimes, half the time says the Mechab is right, half the time says the Ramah is right. The Ramah is not always right. Sometimes you have to follow the Mechab, the Vilna Gun. He doesn't follow party lines. He's, he's, uh, he's not a politician. He tells you what he thinks the, the, the din is. He doesn't follow Ashkenaz, doesn't follow Svar. He tells you what he thinks the correct view is, what he, the correct din is. We shouldn't always follow uh, precedent. We shouldn't always follow the minority. But the Raman writes, if it's a minute that's the by all of, a practice of the mitzvah, the by all of Israel, 
So that seems to indicate that that is the correct halacha. It's a very serious question. It's a very good question. The question was just to already what we notice is that we've been so successful in the Aliyah that frankly he says in Eretz Yisrael, there's no need for Matan to put smiles. Thank God, there's enough coming in the Aliyah, it's very hard for Matan to put smiles out there. So we should have said in the world, we've noticed that politically, we need the state of Israel needs support from Americans and from America. And that won't happen if everybody makes Aliyah. You reach a point where telling everybody to make Aliyah is not worthwhile and not good enough. Absolutely, Chagob is used to say publicly that anyone who's in Chinuch or Rabbanus and Chutzlarts is not allowed to leave. Anyone who's in Chinuch or Rabbanus is fighting assimilation, they're fighting intermarriage, and they're not allowed to leave. And he would say the captain of the ship is not allowed to leave until all the passengers are, are, uh, are safe. And the general on the army is not allowed to leave the front until he knows that uh, all of the soldiers are safe. So I was still there for my heart was Hakachan, the captain of the ship, and the general in the army. And then I saw, and he was very upset when the, when, I, when his children moved to Eretz so He thought that it was wrong. He would say this in public. He thought that it was wrong that anyone in Chinuch in America has to stay in America. And years later, I saw the Maharam Sheikh was a Talmud of the Chsam Seifer. And during the lifetime of Chsam Seifer and Rabbi Kivega, that's when the reform movement began in Europe. And after the Chsam Seifer was passing, then it became even stronger. So the Chsam Seifer, the son of Chsam Seifer and the Maramshik, these were the ones who were fighting reform. So the Maramshik was in the later years, in the, in the 1800s. So he was fighting reform. One of his Talmudim, who had smichim, was a rabbi in the Hungarian community, fighting reform, they were all fighting reform. And he was offered a position of Rabbanus in Eretz Yisrael in the late 1800s. He should just move to Eretz Yisrael, sit and learn to give Shem a Pasch and Shilas, and that's it. Doesn't have to fight reform. So he was thrilled. He didn't enjoy fighting reform. So he, he agreed to the, he packed up his belongings and he's ready to move to Eretz Yisrael and sends a letter to his rabbi, the Maram Sheikh, he should give him a blessing on the move. So Maram Sheikh sends him back, I can't give you a bracha, you do a shalakim din. And he says, whoever is Isaac and Rabbanus and Chutz Lawrence, the general and the army and the captain of the ship, I don't think Rabbi Zolechi knew who the Maram Sheikh was. I doubt that he saw the truth. I don't think he ever heard of it. He said the exact same Russian, that you're not allowed to go. And that's the tshuva, that Maram Sheikh's tshuva, he says, you're not allowed to leave. When he quotes the Ritva and Sukkah, it's also lahafsik from the first mitzvah to do the second mitzvah, because it's a dvar hashus. He says, you're also in the mitzvah of fighting reform. So the Maram Sheikh writes, when you were Talmud and Yeshiva, we had no right to draft you into the army, that you should fight reform. But you volunteered for the army, and they made you a general. And you're successful, so he says you're not allowed to leave because you're doing a mitzvah fighting reform and you want to leave that mitzvah to do a different mitzvah, to go into a different kind of rabbanus of learning and pastor and shilas, giving shiurim. That's awesome. I said, my mitzvah, pata mara mitzvah. That's what he writes. That's the Chuvas Maram Sheikh that Rab Chaim Oizer quoted. Rab Kuk used to correspond with Rab Chaim Oizer. They had tremendous respect for each other. And Rav Kook prepared, Rav Chaim Moser was interested in leaving Vilna to retire and move to Eretz Yisrael. So Rav Kook had a home, an apartment for him, and he had a parnasa for him, and he had a title. Rav Kook was a chief rabbi of Eretz Yisrael. Rav Chaim Moser was going to be the Reish Kol Bnei Agur, the chief rabbi of the world. Rav Kook was going to be the rabbi of Eretz Yisrael. Then the last minute, Rav Chaim Moser backed out, and he sends him a letter. He says that the Rabbanim, and they printed the letters available in his handwriting. The letters available. He writes, the Rabbanim of Vilna say that they feel that I'm still needed. Uh, and I'm not allowed to leave. Because the Maram Sheikh writes, the captain of the ship, and the general in the army is not allowed to leave. That's the Maram Sheikh that he quoted here. So Rav Salvechi used to feel like that. That it's not right. Should we discourage people from going on Aliyah? I don't think so. I think the more Jews you have living in Eretz, the safer the Medina will be. 
more Jews come to Eretz Yisrael, the more Arabs will go to America. The Arabs don't belong in Eretz Yisrael, they belong in the Arabs moving to Europe and to Canada and to America, let them go to America. The Jews should take over Eretz Yisrael. I think the more Jews you have, I think the mitzvah of Aliyah is, is not from the most important. Shabbos and Kashas and Taras and Mishpach is more important. A lot of people come to Eretz Yisrael, they're so gung-ho about Aliyah, they feel that that's more important than all the mitzvahs. So they'll, they'll settle in a city when they know Shomri Shabbos just in order to live in Eretz Yisrael. That's ridiculous. The Gemara says it's a bigger mitzvah to live in an Ir Shakun and Nochrim in Eretz Yisrael rather to live in an Ir Shakun Yisrael in Israel. In Chutzlar, but it doesn't mean that it's going to pull down your level of religious observance, which it certainly will. A lot of communities in Eretz Yisrael, there's so many chilonim. It's not a small idea. How are you going to raise your children there? Many of the Americans lose their children in Eretz Yisrael because they don't realize this is a difficult uh, society. It's a very difficult society. But I think that certain mitzvahs have historical significance in certain generations. More than the mitzvah of Aliyah now, I think, is, the, is uh, historically a, a more important mitzvah than many others. Because Eretz Yisrael needs more people. They need more Jewish people to, that the country should be more secure. How are they going to make a living? A good question. They have to figure it out before they come. They shouldn't come and live off of welfare. They should, uh, they should figure something out. We need Mechan Chem and Chutz Lawrence also. Look, Rabbi Shmuel were living in Eretz Yisrael. They went to Chutz Lawrence. The Duchino. So we need Machalchem and Chutz Lorz also. It's a good reason to leave Eretz Yisrael if there's a need for Machalchem in America. There is a need for good Machalchem in America. There are a lot of uh, positions available and they need qualified people. But um, I think we all belong in Eretz Yisrael. None of us are supposed to be living in America. What correct is that everyone should live in Eretz Yisrael. I remember the first time I met Rabbi Avram Shapiro. I happened to be in Eretz Yisrael, and the Rabbinical Council of America was having a tour in Eretz Yisrael, so someone recommended I should join along with them, so it's very nice. So the first, first part of the tour was, in the morning, they went to Hechel Shlomo, that's where the chief rabbi used to meet, now they don't meet there anymore, and, uh, and Rabbi Ram Shapir was just appointed chief rabbi then. He was always a shishin in Merkel Salah, he was just appointed chief rabbi. So as all the rabbis, he spoke to the group, and as all the rabbis were leaving the room, so they were introducing all the different rabbis. So they introduced me, this is Rabbi Herschel Shechter. Oh, you heard of Rabbi Herschel Shechter. So there used to be a very prominent Rabbi Herschel Shechter, my father's age. He was a chaplain in the, in the American army in the Second World War. He was the one who liberated uh, Rabbi Lau, senior, from, from the death camps in Europe. So I said, you probably know Rabbi Hersha Shechter, the chaplain in the American army, a very prominent, he was the president of Mizrahi, president of Russian Jewry, the president of the President's Conference, the president of the RCA, the president of every organization. He needed a big ask, a big ask, and his son is Rabbi J.J. Shechter. So he said, no, he knows Rabbi Shechter, he knows me. He said, Rabbi Ram says, he read my Shtigal Torah where I quoted the Chazanish about this, or I'm celebrating about that. No, he knows, he knows. So then two days later, I get a phone call from Eli Rubin, Rabbi Eli Rubin, who was learning that America Sarav. He was Rabbi Ram Shapiro's uh, American contact. So he calls me on the phone, Rabbi Ram Shapiro wants that we should come and visit him, he's gonna pick us up. So we come, we should come with the whole family. So now we have nine children, and I had four children, four, five, it was a long time ago, 30, 35 years ago, something like that, 40 years ago. So, uh, so we went with all the children. So he was, he was a koyan, so he gave Rechaz Kainan to everybody. And then he gives me a whole sales pitch for 25 minutes, why I should move to Eretz Yisrael. You need people like me who know how to say shur, and they have a lot of mora who know how to pass on shilas, but we, know, we need people who can say good shur, and he reads my new Torah, we need. And he says he has money, he has access to money, and if, if I'll come to Eretz Yisrael, he'll get me a position, or he'll make me my own yeshiva, my own, whatever I want. We've got to work out all the, everything's going to be well. For 25 minutes, he's explaining why I have to come, why they need people like me. Then he asks me, after the whole sales pitch, he asks me, what else do I do in addition to giving shiur in the yeshiva? So I said, well, every Tuesday night, I give a shiur in Queens. Once in how many people attend, I still give a shiur. 
Now it's on Zoom, the last uh, two years, but uh, how many people in the tent? So at that time, it was a big crowd. And every Monday night, I used to give a share of Rabbi Haskell Luxin Shul. How many people attend? I said, I'm there once a month, I give a share over there. How many people attend? I come. Then he says, he takes it back. He says to me, if you have influence on so many families in Chutz Lawrence, your place is to stay in Chutz Lawrence. But I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, we all really belong in Eretz Yisrael. I think uh, more correct is, We'll all move to Eretz Yisrael, the Rabban of Shem moved to Eretz Yisrael, the Palabat and Shitzi, that everyone belongs in Eretz Yisrael. And we'll find jobs for everybody. I don't think, uh, I think the mitzvah of Aliyah is more important now than, uh, than in other generations. I think so. Uh, some sh- halachi questions they ask me, and the non halachi questions they don't ask me. <laughs> Officially, the OU is an organization of synagogues, it's an organization of Balabatim, so they can't pass the many shyness. So, the OU give hachstrafes. So, the OU has 35 rabbon in Big Tamil Chacham in the office from Satmar, and from Lababich, and from YU, and from Chaim Bolin, and Torvadas. They have from all the different yeshivas. Anti-Zionist, pro-Zionist, everything. Everybody works together. All the Shilas are worked out by the Rabbanim. I help them also work out the Shilas. But officially, the Kashas endorsement is given by the Rabbinical Council of America, because that's a rabbinical organization. So years ago, there used to be a Kashas organization from the RCA. But the Kashas organization, honestly, I didn't know anything about Kashas. So all the Shilas and Kashas were worked out by the Rabbanim and the, and the OU. Kashas organization of the OU of the RCA and the OU, used to pass Karanika on the Shilas. Is it okay to give a, they used to give a Hechshan, Mendel's Hamish Shrimp. That was the name of the product. People who, people, Bali Chu, who used to eat shrimp before they became observed and said that it doesn't taste like shrimp, it's a fake. But that was the sales pitch. They called it Mendel's Hamish Shrimp. So the RCA, discussed it, and they decided that they have to discontinue the Hechshon and Mendel's Hamish Hashim. It doesn't sound nice. So these kind of decisions I'm not involved in. They felt that uh, it's not right to call something uh, ham, uh, pork, whatever, and to give a Hechshon. Okay. So as I know, determining what's the public opinion. Um, in Irish, you know, there's a rainbow of opinions uh, Strictly speaking, if a person goes to Mikra, Balkari is not allowed to go onto the Harabai. So strictly speaking, the first couple of Amas and Harabai, you are allowed to go if you went to Mikra, even if you're at full, even if you're at full Yom, went to Mikra that day. But then the, the Rabbana and the Harabais is divided into separate sections. So the inner section, you're not allowed to go if you're a Tommy Mace, the Rabbana. So the first couple of Amas, you can go. The Rabbanut has been discouraging people for years to have a sign up. The Jewish people are not allowed to go, I think it's in English, and the Hebrew, you're not allowed to go past this point because we're all Tanayim. And it's uh, the Ramam holds a Kichalos in love, and the Harabais still has the same position that it always had. So, um, if you went to Mikvah, you can go the first couple of hours. But women cannot go to Mikvah whenever they want. A single girl, we have a practice, we don't, single girls don't go to Mikvah at all. There's a bunch of basic Mikvah show you come, the single girls wanted to go, the hard guys would go to Mikvah. But today, we wouldn't permit it. We're not sure that the Makamah Mikvah is Kitchel as always. It could be they're all going to the Mikvah is unnecessary. And it may lead the girl to sin. I remember uh, someone told me he went on a tour in the Harabayas with a tour guide, and they said, where they're allowed to go, not allowed to go. And there was a single girl on the tour, and they, they found out, they realized the single girl was a religious girl. So after the whole tour was over, they asked the girl, how are you allowed to go on the Harabayas? Single girls don't go to Mikvah. So the girl said, she's getting married tonight. And she just went to the Mikvah last night. And she wanted to go to the Harabayas to be Miss Powell. That the Zivik should be on the offer. 
That was beautiful. That was beautiful. But when they can't just go to mikvah whenever they want, sometimes they have to wait Shem the king, sometimes they have to wait seven days, not Shem the king, whatever. And conservative reform people are not going to go to mikvah. So the Rabbanut was opposed to orthodox men going to mikvah, going to rabbis. You're going to mislead reform and conservative people to think that they can also go without going to the mikvah. And a lot of women will... Uh, will go to the rabbis, they're not going to go to mikveh, that's not her. So the rabbanut doesn't have too many chassidim. And Meir Sharon and Rey Brak, they couldn't care less what the rabbanut says. The chilonim certainly couldn't care less what they say. The only ones who hold from the rabbanut are the, uh, are the datim liumim, the modern orthodox people. So if they're not, if they're not going to follow what the Rabbanon said, the government will be thrilled to close down the whole Rabbanon. I don't want to be the one responsible for closing the Rabbanon. They have a lot of chesrainists, the Rabbanon. It's not what it should be. It's not perfect. But without the Rabbanon, it'll be much worse. So I think it's not right at all that, uh, that Rabbanon from Chutz Lord's come to Eretz Yisrael and start going on our advice against the Rabbanon. I know sometimes when Rabbanim and Eretz Yisrael give a psak for America, a lot of times I see they don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand. A lot of times they tell the student, go to this yeshiva, don't go to that yeshiva, go to this yeshiva, go to this red yeshiva, that red yeshiva. They don't understand the politics of America. They don't understand what reform a conservative is in America. They don't understand anything about America. They don't live in America. So I don't think it's right that they should give an opinion about how to act in America. I think it's right that the Americans should give an opinion how to act over here in Eretz Yisrael. And I don't want to be responsible for the government closing down the Rabbanon. They're going to realize that nobody follows the Rabbanon, even the modern Orthodox, even the Tatiri Umiim, also don't follow the Rabbanon, so they close the whole thing down. That's, they'd be thrilled to close it down. They have less uh, problems. Rabbanon just causes uh, headaches now. That's why I don't go to the Arabites. Last question, very straightforward one. Can a person make a traditional soup on Shabbos? I think it's like a cup of, you know, cups of soup. Oh, yeah, you put in burning hot water. Yeah. And then as Ain Bishal left the food is edible. That's a half food in the refrigerator that's already cooked, Kugel, inflation, whatever. So it's edible already. So when you reheat it, the definition of Bishal by food is if you make it right lachi. On water, the egg really tough things that for sure it's yesh bishalach habishal. On water, I cooked what I put in the refrigerator. I cook it again. It's cooking yesh mayayin. It's, it's not hot anymore. The whole definition of bishal by water, by liquid, when you make it yad so lettuce. So by water, the pashta says that it certainly is yesh bishalach habishal. But the shadow is over here. This stuff, it's not edible the way it is now. It was, it was heated to the point that it shrank. And it doesn't, I don't think it tastes good. So the shot is, if you would soak it in cold water, would it be edible? If you soak it in cold water, it would taste. It would be tasty. It would taste much better if you soak it in hot water. But if you soak it in cold water, it would be edible. So then it's not that the heat is making it edible. It's the water is making it edible. So that's not really bishul. That may be an iser of misak and mana. If you take food that's not edible, you make it edible. That may be needs in the second mana. Like there's a din if you match with trimus and maestro. So the Gemara says that's the second mana of the Rabban, because it was also to eat it before. Now you can eat it. Or uh, sometimes you, if you the Gemara talks about the second mana by food, if the food was not edible. So it could be that that's also, even if you're soaking in cold water, it could be that it's the second mana if it wasn't edible before. But um, if by soaking in the cold water it doesn't it doesn't become tasty, and only becomes tasty if you soak it in burning hot water, yeah, it's so lettuce. So then that's going to be bishul. Then it will be a problem with bishul because if the way it is now, it's not edible. The fact that it was edible before it doesn't help. Now they heated it, so it's not edible. I think that's the thing. <laughs> Thank you, so, so thank you. I thank you. Every time I visit the yeshiva, I have Hanoi. You should learn up the storm. Father's son needs more time to chachamim. Whatever you do for a living, doesn't matter whether you become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an Indian chief. All the Jewish people have an obligation to learn Kola Terakula. And it's not impossible. 
Kola Tarakula, the Balatanya writes, includes Tanakh. He says, how can you have a, an obligation to master to learn Kola Tarakula? The Gemara quotes the Posek, Arucha Neeris Mit Berachal Meneyam. That the Gemara Neerim says that's referring to the Torah. It's impossible to learn Kola Tarakula. Balatanya says in the Shulchan Aruch, Rav in Hilchos Amat Torah, he writes. That Gemara means the Oime Kabbalah Satir is Zain Losov. Arucham Neris Merchavu Miriam. But just the text of Kalatar Kula is not that much. It's the whole Tanakh, believe it or not, people don't realize. Learning Tanakh is also Talmud Torah. They have to be Mavis said every week. Takanas Chacham and Shnai Mikav Echatar. They have to set aside a little time every day to learn the Nevi'im Tzum, not just to learn the names of the Nevi'im Tzum. Chalmus Avad Yeyan Amichan. You have to learn what they said. The whole Hashkaf is Hayahadus is based on what the Nadim and the Ksuvim say. You don't have it in the, in the air. You have that Kisvakar, you have to learn Kisvakar. You have to learn Sifro Sifre Mechilta Mishnayas Tosefta. You have to learn Babli Yerushalmi. And then you have to learn Rama Meshulchanach. So the, so the Balatani writes, that's considered Kola Tarkun. How deeply you understand it, that's our Lucham Eretz Midah. And that's not so difficult. You don't have to finish everything by this September. You should all be blessed with a long life. But people make a mistake. They think the mitzvah of Tamil Torah is only in the years when you're a student. If they already graduated, you're no longer a graduated graduate school, you're no longer a student. That's not correct. The Jewish people are always Tamil Yechachanim, always students till the day you die. The Ramam says whether you're healthy or sick, whether you're young or old. It doesn't matter. Every Jewish person has an obligation to learn Kola Torah Kula. People make a mistake, they think the Mitzvah Tamil Torah is only on people who are rabbis or in Chinuch. That's not true. Mitzvah Tamil Torah is on every single Jew. I know lawyers and doctors who are more learned than Rebbe's and Ayeshida. They just don't have the personality to go into Chinuch Rabbanis. But the obligation to learn is mutam on everybody. I'm from the parents' union. You should have a hakoras al to your parents that they let you go to Eretz Yisrael, maybe they even sent you, it is Gorgav and if you had a fight with them to get here, you should appreciate the fact that they're, that they're allowing you to spend a year or two or three or whatever it happens to be. You should be market to your parents. You have a schools to learn the Torah Shemal Peh. Torah Shemal Peh is what kept the Jewish people going all the years. That Torah Shemal Peh, the Torah can't apply in a modern generation. You have to have Torah Shemal Peh to know how to apply the Torah to new circumstances to new situations. And the only way we'll proceed is, is by continuing to learn Torah Shabbat Peh. In Sefer Daniel, it says, in every generation, the Jews will be in Golas, every generation, many Jews will be lost to observance. And the small group who will remain, he calls them the Maskilim. In modern years, we call the Maskilim the Apikursim, who are making fun of him. But in Tanakh, the Maskilim are the Orthodox Jews. And it says in the next generation, from the Orthodox Jews, many will fall off and will be losing in every generation. We're losing a lot of people in Eretz Yisrael and in Chutzlars. We're losing a lot of people that are assimilating, intermarrying, that disappear. But uh, that was predicted by the Novi, by not the Novi, Daniel wasn't the Novi, but Daniel, the Rocha Kodesh, he said, that's what I have. And we try to prevent as much as possible. We have to see to it that we, we should keep learning Torah Shabbat. We can't understand Torah Shabbat without Torah Shabbat. Stop. We have an obligation to learn up his tongue, to learn a lot. She will be healthy for many years to come. Learn as much Torah as you can. Kalalisa needs more and more Tamil Chacham. Have a